So I've got a little confession to make. I do like to take a dump with the door open. And if you can't handle that, maybe you should try going to a different McDonald's. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Black Dog number 79. I'm Lee. <laughs> I'm Darren. I'm Jim. I'm Elton. And this week, we will not be dwelling upon that last joke, and we will be moving on to seeing how everyone's week's been. Um, feedback, if there's any, I haven't checked yet, but we will see. And um, then we'll be getting on to this week's movie, which was a kind of random selection from the three of us, because Elton didn't think he'd be here today, but he is. And um, and what was that film then, Elton, that you randomly picked, which was I, Darren's choice? <laughs> a guns Akimbo. Guns Akimbo, yes. Harry Potter, hmm. The Wilderness Years, which we will be getting to. Um, after everything else. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, do I get the blame or does Darren get the blame for this? Oh, hey man, we, I was only following orders. I was told to pick a film, so I did. Nobody yeah. specific. You say, well, this is it, you see. I'm like a computer. you got to program me properly, right? If you don't, things can go wrong. Right? <laughs> <They don't. laughs> <laughs> Once again, the fog horn of despondency comes in to play. Oh, no, I, I thought I was in the wanking shed. I'm not. I'm in the jalapeno <laughs> shed, obviously. Ah! <laughs> mm. Anyway, right. Well, he says trying to take a, a, a sip of tea and then sounding like he's drowning in it in the microphone. Anyway. Jalapeno shed. Yeah, jalapeno Hala- shed. Yeah, a jalapeno yeah. shed. Have I missed something? No, not really. Darren's just to, Darren's just trying to do the whole. I've got chili on me willy. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> I've got chili on me willy and a dilly in me filly. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like Shall I let your mum for me? It's like yeah. it's like the after dark version <laughs> of Tickle on a Tum. <laughs> so I just I went all Will Smith for a minute there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. chili uh-huh. willy. Oh, he we was doing straight uh-huh. out of Compton again. <laughs> Straight, straight out of compost. <laughs> easy as his name and the boys coming straight out of Sainsbury's. Straight out of compost is the Wurzels, isn't it? I think it was. Hello, boy lovers. <laughs> Did a drive by past your window last night. <laughs> Put a cap in some motherfucker's ass last night. Dung, 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 dung. <laughs> <laughs> Spilt some 40 on the old curb there to celebrate my dead friend. <laughs> did some drugs and got right off me tits and ended up in Bargate. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck them police. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fuck them rusers. Fuck them rusers. Fuck them right. <laughs> the arse. Fling. <laughs> Right. <laughs> anyway, moving on, uh, we'll start by seeing how everyone's week's been, and we'll see how you're going, Jim. How was your week, sir? Um, yes, it was a week. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's been, one of those, it's been a very distracting week. It's been a bit of a news junkie. Oh it's yes, kind of, every day there's some other nonsense distracting me from work and just kind of. Hmm. <laughs> Have we guillotined him, the cunt, yet? No? <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> uh, oh, another scandal. Oh. And mm-hmm. I'm just looking now, we're getting towards it. I know I've worked out what the end of season finale is. Yeah. There'll be the Sue Gray report, mm. which will exonerate him. <laughs> but then we get the video. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that's which coming. Which will be utterly, utterly damning. <laughs> yeah. And might see rioting in the streets. So I'm looking forward to that. But not sure where that's going to happen. <laughs> Sorry, was that not bad? without a fucking head. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. As they, as the, yeah, they, this is all coinciding with that whole right to riot thing, right to protest, mm. which got thrown out the lords. This is a little bit of politics for you, ladies and gentlemen. And um, yeah, and it's interesting that that didn't get get thrown, that didn't get all the way through the lords. So uh, that's been thrown out just in time for everyone to basically riot in the streets when the Sue Gray report comes out and says, my boss who has given me a job, <laughs> has not done anything wrong. So it says here. He was mm. not in the room when he said he he was, and 
stuff. Yes. Despite videos and photographic evidence and, and witness testimony to the contrary, he was not here. <laughs> I've no. been mostly <laughs> eating barbons. <laughs> <laughs> it's a plot mm. by North Korea to discredit the uh, the Prime Minister. Um, I don't so, think North uh, Korea needs to do anything. Nope. No, we <laughs> we can do that. Great but, job on our own. I was going to say, all he does is just hide in the fridge. Like like a <laughs> shit Indiana Jones or something, you know, just hide away. Kim Jong Il was probably going, Boris, who? <laughs> <laughs> who this Boris? Yeah, who this Boris? <laughs> this Boris bloke. He probably thinks it's that little elf character out of Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> if I give him a sock, will he be free? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Hmm. So apart from the news cycle then, Jim, is that is <laughs> that is that been sort of consuming your time, so uh, rather a lot, and um, mm. I might have written a couple of angry letters to my my MP. <laughs> oh yes, don't think you'd <laughs> be alone. Look, I told you last year after the coming thing, Boris should have gone then, but you didn't listen, did you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you keep thinking he's drinking the Last Chance Saloon. Let me tell you, on the half of the public, that establishment shut months ago, as far as we're concerned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Last Chance Saloon I went shit out him of business. Up good and proper. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Damn right. I'm going to send another one tomorrow going, I just resign now, mate. You're not getting re-elected up here. No. Mm. I'd do it now before you run me out of towel on a rail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Once the pitchforks start coming up the and the, and the, and the, and the little torches come up the hill. Yeah. Well, last week someone did put dog shit through his office letterbox. So. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Pe- people ain't happy. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> you, no shit. <laughs> no, yes, it was shit, though. Yeah. I no, think that was the whole point. Yeah, yeah. Like, quite the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Other than that, I've been watching um, a, a, a channel kind of... We often delve into YouTube and mm. watch kind of like spooky stuff. And, um, you know, you get these random recommendations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we discovered a channel called Hell on Earth. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, which is uh, it is an herb X channel of, of what? Which means urban exploration. Oh, okay, okay. And Hell and Earth do um, we've got the the urban exploring adventure show. Mm. Where it's basically three lads from Yorkshire who travel around the country in a van and go to like abandoned buildings, mm. um, and kind of it's a big whole thing urban exploring. And, you know, it's kind of, you know, the rules are, you know, you don't break in anywhere. Um, mm. You don't take anything. You don't break now. You just go in and film it. And, you know, and there's some mad, mad places that are abandoned. Yeah. I mean, like military complexes, you can go in and walk around. Mm. You know, cr- yeah. not to mention just houses that are like, you know, probably worth several million picturesque cottages in like, you know, the Lake <laughs> District. Abandoned, just left there. <laughs> What the fuck's going on with the price of property in this country? How is that even possible? That's weird. It is really weird. And, you know, you don't know. You can never find out what happened to these places. And mm. these guys aren't terribly interested in finding out. They just kind of explore, explore and take the piss. Because <laughs> yeah. that proper Yorkshire, it's kind of, oh, it's a drip in here. Well, you're a fucking drip. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> kind of, uh, I, would, I would say, you know, give it, you can check out, you know, be warned, it's very strong language and, you mm. know, uh, Naughty humour, but hey, you're listening to this show. <laughs> you don't well, need I was, warning. <laughs> I was going to say, by this point, I think yeah, it's a little, little late in the day. <laughs> but it is quite funny. It's kind of just like you know, three mates who's generally having a laugh, but mm. also going around these places and what the fuck happened here? <laughs> Look at this. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's kind of, and they, they are generally just kind of like very dry northern humour. And uh, just get, mm. you know, one thing I've learned doing this show is that the more money you have, the more spiral staircases you have in your house. <laughs> <laughs> were they the? Why do the guys just out of interest? Because it's just something that's just sort of springing to mind. They weren't the guys who did that owl man thing, were they? Don't think so. Okay, did you know that one? The one with the guy that the, they sort of went and sort of stuck a man in an owl with an owl head and big long talony claws, and then stuck him in a suit and then hid him in a place for yeah, urban I think, I think explorers. That was hex. I think that was a hex media because that was like a tie into a, the uh, the film. Ah, right. His name I've forgotten. 
Uh, it... Lord of Tears, that's it. All right. Not Owlman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's a new Marvel property, I believe. Oh, more than likely. <laughs> Owlman. Uh... <laughs> Does whatever an owl can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it is it's kind of it's strangely engrossing, and it's a mix of kind of childish humour, mm. <laughs> and just makes taking the piss, but also seeing these just bizarre building, you know, and like perfectly good mansions just left to rot, mm. and it's just you know, it, you know if you don't know you're in a property in this country, you've got some property it's worth a fortune no matter what it is, yeah, and the fact that things places just left you know, how how it even happens, and it's often just full of old people's stuff. Wow. You know, it's kind of like, you know, what, did they just up and leave? Did they die? Did they have no relatives? Surely, you know, surely someone would come to claim this, or at least claim the building, because a lot of the houses are actually really nice in good places. It's mm. really strange. Ooh. But, yeah, it's def- definitely definitely wor- uh, worth a look. If, uh, if you watch a couple, you'll, you'll get hooked or you won't. But uh, <laughs> I mean, the one last week, they were in a, an abandoned asylum in Cardiff. And out the window, they literally saw a bloke look like Michael Myers walk past. Oh God, no! <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> so they did the sensible thing and left. Let everyone shout, Michael, and then hid. <laughs> 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 and then popped up again, Mickey boy. <laughs> nice, yeah. yeah, that that yeah. <laughs> now that is a that is a horror movie premise, isn't it? Just like ha ha ha, isn't it funny? Oh, we are put to all be stalked by a Michael Myers type character around an asylum. Nice. Yeah. Oh, because the other, other kind of running feature is uh, reviewing the, the shit graffiti they find. Uh. And they, they particularly like finding people who can't draw swastikas or pentagrams. <laughs> draw the fucking Star of David, fucking morons. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you started this one, then couldn't finish it. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why do you break into an abandoned building miles from nowhere and write black people don't matter on the wall? In fucking biro in small letters. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case anyone sees it. You got, yeah. got a plausible <laughs> deniability, you know. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Oh. Yeah, so that's, that's the Hell on Earth channel. Okay, so, go over to Delvey and you'll find all sorts of weird. <laughs> yeah. Weird, weird stuff in there. Oh, that sounds in. That sounds it's, pretty... it's been keeping keep us very entertained. Cause we've been going quite a few years on this stuff. Right. <laughs> Nice. Okie dokie. Anything else, sir? Uh, no, I'll leave that there, I think. Okie dokie. Right, fine. Um, and then we'll move on to you, Elton. Have you got anything to report this week, sir? Um, not really. Um, That's fair. Kind of told you my week in the green room, so, so won't yeah. be telling that. No, to everyone else. No, if no, that's okay. No. Look, look, it's nothing to be ashamed of. A lottery win is something that, you know... <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Screw you, fuckers! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. No. Uh, so, yeah. Has anything happened? I ended up finishing Succession. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's mighty fine. That yeah. is brilliant, yes. I can't wait for that to continue. Nice. I have finished The Expanse now. Well, funny enough, that's part of my week. Um, <laughs> I, I won't dive into that um well you, you you dive into that every week don't you exactly and th- this is not the place for it there is another place for it which, which is, is which is over at rogue 2 media and you could uh, <laughs> download into the expanse sponsored by tassimo oh god <laughs> <laughs> don't oh, wake the beast <laughs> ah! anyway um, i'm yep. trying to think think what else uh, I've I've started trying to soundproof the recording area. Oh yeah, yes. And um, I I bought some moving sheets. So if if you want to move house, mm. then you get like thick rugs. Oh yeah, eBay. Right, and you can wrap up your TV so they don't get as damaged as what they would if they were naked. Okay. Uh, so I bought some of them and I made a little little test frame. Out of uh, an old wardrobe, we had, had, had like yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it was what one of these. Um, uh, what is the? I'm trying to like a fabric wardrobe that we used to have. It was like a temporary wardrobe for one of the kids. All right, and um, like a sort of IKEA thing. 
Yeah, but like a, a real crappy one. Really, really crappy one. Just pine So like an Ikea thing? <laughs> like an Ikea thing, yes. <laughs> and uh, I, we broke it down and I'm in dad mm. mode, breaking mm. things down to go, might need that, might need that, could do with that. And so kept, basically kept the whole thing apart from the fabric that goes around it and kept all the wood. Mm. And today or this week decided... I'm going to use that wood now. Otherwise, it's just going to sit there for many, many years, gathering dust, not doing anything. So I made a little frame, wrapped mm-hmm. it up in one of these sheets, stapled it at the back. It's like a modern piece of art. Mm. I don't know what to do with it, though, but it does seem to work. So I'm going to make three more <laughs> and see s- how we go. Your sound booth. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. I'm not allowed to put them on the wall. I won't be putting them on the walls. Right. Okay. I well, lean them yeah. against the walls because mm. okay. they're they're not very pretty, but they do their job. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and and when people come round, we hide them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's as about as exciting as it gets for me this week. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. You might making be... making grey squares. Well, you know what? There's there's worse ways to spend a week. Yeah, isn't there? there is. Yeah. There is. There is, but um, you know, and you might want to jump in on my my week because you know the expanse is coming back up again, mate. I'm going to mention it. Oh, okay, okay. okay. I, so, I'm poised, for poised, that. poised. Okie dokie. Right. Well, then uh, let's move on to Mr. Barnard. How about you, sir? How's your week been? Uh, my week's actually been pretty good. Mm-hmm. It's been, yeah, it's um, I've had some, I've had some real kind of um luck this week oh, when yeah. it comes to. You like got a lottery win as well. No, no. Well, I I did from a, a point of view of getting things fixed in this flat. Oh yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I I got the uh, I got the triple basically. Um, yeah. Yeah. I've had uh, a problem with the flush on the toilet. I've had a problem <laughs> with the hot water in this place because the hot mm. water went off for some reason. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've also had a problem with the extractor fan. In the bathroom, which sounds like when you switch it on, it sounds like it's been wired to the local nuclear power plant. Um, oh, right. It just goes into overdrive, right? Hmm. So um, the guy that does the electrics on the estate, he's come in, he's done like, he's fitted out most of the flats here. He lives here as hmm. well um, with things like, you know, extractor fans and whatever. Um, he managed to get a replacement flat fan mm-hmm. for the bathroom for us for it was still in warranty so it was free of charge and he came around and fitted it for me but mm-hmm. not only did he do that right he had a look at the um uh the boiler mm-hmm. went out there and found out that both the thermostats on the overnight section and the bit that kind of mm-hmm. hits your water all the time both of those had blown mm-hmm. so he went off and got me a couple of those and fitted those for free fitted mm-hmm. so that sorted out the water he's fitted the fan on the wall as well which now you can hardly hear it which right. is great it does the job and um he showed me the trick with the uh how to fix the flush on the loop mm-hmm. basically it wasn't firing out enough water but enough water wasn't going into the system at the mm-hmm. back and I mm. thought, what the fuck is this? How does this work? And he said, oh, yeah, what you want to do is turn that little screw there. And it's a little, it's a little, it's like a little pointer that pushes a button that stops the water from filling the tank. And somebody had extended it too far. So what it was doing is it was pushing the button well before the tank should have been fully fit, uh, fully filled. Right. And he showed me how to do that. It was so simple. We've been suffering with that for a, a while now. And it's just like, so you're telling me that. That's fucking well it. That's it. Just that tiny thing there is is to blame for everything. That's the story of my life, really. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah. <laughs> you sort of that that tiny little thing's caused you so much grief. It, exactly, G- yeah. Jim, that's come in. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, I'm happy as Larry uh-huh. for that there. So, um, all good. Cool. Oh, brilliant. Uh, let's see. What else have I done? Um, oh, uh, I've been watching uh, a guy on YouTube. Um, mm. I think his, the actual name of the page is Putter. But if you look up a guy called Billy Anderson, that's the name of his character in GTA 5, I think it's all G- the last GTA that came out. 
Yeah. Um, it's five or six, whatever it is. Yeah. But what he does is he goes on the role playing server mm. and um, he basically griefs douchebags within right. the game, right? right? I mean, sometimes you get people who role play along with him. And those are always a good laugh, and they they take it in good humour of what he's doing. But mm. then he gets like the twelve year old kids who just fucking lose it. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. When he he uh, they come up, they try and rob him, and then he pulls a fast one. And now I've watched so many of these videos. Yeah, that if I see a certain garage coming to come into frame, it's like. Oh fuck! This kid's gonna die, because what he does is he drives to the top of this fucking uh, this car park and just jumps out of the car as it goes to the barrier at the end. <laughs> he had this one girl who tried to uh, what was it? He was he told her he jokingly said um, that's he, he gave her a taxi run. He said that's three thousand dollars, please. Mm. And she goes, yeah, sure. She goes, I've got the money for that. He went, Have you really? And she's like, Yeah, yeah, I've got that. So we took her to where. She was going to be, she gave him $3. So what mm. he did was he locked the doors on the car so she couldn't get out. And he goes, I'll take you somewhere. And you see him <laughs> drive up to this thing. Mm. And she's like, oh, have you got a house up here? He goes, yeah, I'll show it to you. And he left out of the car. And it's gone straight over the edge. And he's fitting <laughs> explosives to it. So before I even hit the fucking floor, he blows it up. And you just hear it go, <laughs> in midair. Nice. And then. His usual character thing is he was standing mm. there on the edge looking at the wreckage and everything, and then he switches mm. to the cam that he's had fitted inside the car. Because you can do things like, um, you know, bait cars. No, where they don't. Bait cars, what they are is they're, the police use them. What they do is they set up a car that looks like it's really good to nick, mm. and then they'll control the engine and everything. They'll, but they'll have complete control over the engine. They'll mm. let them go for a little way, until, and when they've got them on film... And you can look this up on YouTube. There's all this proper stuff of the American police doing this, mm. right? People break into these cars and then they think they've got away with it. All of a sudden the engine cuts out and they can't get out the doors. And then there's like 50 police cars fucking turn up and arrest them. Right. Well, you can do that in GTA 5, right? Mm. And what he does is he'll lock the doors and she's trying to get out. And there was one bloke he did this to. You just hear him go, oh, shit. And then it blows up. <laughs> right. And then he'll stand there looking at the wreckage and he'll go, Jeeves, I think it's that time again. And you just hear this classical music playing as he gets his character to stand there smoking a cigarette, <laughs> looking at the burning wreck. <laughs> nice. So, um, yeah, Billy Anderson. Billy Anderson. Billy Anderson. Okay. Yeah. And it's just amazing the amount of people that will <laughs> just try to get away with shit. As I say, mm. there, quite a lot of them just play along with it. Um, there's a lot of people who role play the police officers in it, and they do like proper paperwork and stuff like this. What, and, in GTA? Uh, in GTA, the, <laughs> on the role playing server, they, there's a lot of people who will just who will just play along with it. It's really, really good. It right. just adds a little something to the game, especially because he knows all the police guys. Mm. in the, And he gets people put away for like 3,000 months. In a prison cell, he, he fucking double crosses them. If they're not really, if they're not really nice people, he'll just. But he was like, right, I'll fucking stitch you up, mm. and he'll plant drugs on them and stuff like this. So when the police officers turn up and they search them, they've got like like forty pounds of fucking codeine tablets <laughs> in their pockets. Like, where the fuck did that come from? <laughs> ah, yes, and that's it. Cards them off to prison. Yeah. So um, yeah, Billy Anderson. Um, I've been having a bit of a laugh watching those videos. Mm. So that's good. Um, let's see. What else did I watch this week? Oh, um, I did done watch Ghostbusters Afterlife. Right. So um, took a chance on that. And yeah, I thought it was all right. It's okay. Okay. You know, it wasn't uh, the worst film I'd ever seen. And <laughs> Yeah, I know it, what you're going to say about member berries and stuff like this. Yeah, but it's, it's not just that. It's just like the st- the first half of the film is 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 trying to do something different. It is, but it, it, there's so much about it. It's just there purely just to just tweak nostalgia. And I'm not just talking about member berries. I'm just talking about like you know we we've, we've got to we got to show everything from the original film. It's just like mm-hmm. I don't. I just don't. I don't get it. I didn't. I didn't get any entertainment value from going. I recognise that thing. But oh, you know. that's that's fine. I mean, you know, it's it's. 
that, I mean, that's how you feel about it. That's how you feel about it. Yeah, mm. that's it. It's um, me personally watched it, had a bit of a laugh at it. And uh, there's there's one bit I was impressed with. Mm. And it comes at the end. Yes. Um, so, uh, yeah, effects budget on one tiny, one little thing. And it's mm. not all the ghosts and everything. It's one other thing at yeah. the end. I was I was very impressed with that. It's like I sat there thinking, surely that's not what I. Th- but what? <laughs> I how how? And I'm looking at it thinking I'm I'm looking for the the lines. You know, I'm looking mm. for the the fucking the the bad CG on this thing. It's like I can't I can't really mm. see anything. It's it's really well done. I wish I could say. Yeah, it you, I, I, if it's what I think it is, yeah, I understand why you can't say. Yeah, but, exactly. But mm. I thought that was really well done. So mm. um, I, I hope that was informative for people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So on one, on the one hand, on the one hand, you got me, and I thought the first half was okay. The second mm. half was just remember this, remember this, remember this, over and over again. Um, and also wrote the uh, wrote up the fact that you know, frankly, the Ghostbusters are assholes. <laughs> yeah. One in particular, um, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, yeah, it wasn't for me. So you either go with me and say it wasn't for me, or you go with Aaron and say, yeah, it was all right. Yeah, it was okay. It was cool, right. you know. Okay, didn't have to, you know. No stress there. <laughs> no stress. No, no stress, nothing. man. No stress. Okay. Fair enough. Lovely <laughs> starbly. Lovely starbly. Moving on swiftly. Yeah. Oh, that's me. I'm done. Really. That's you done. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I can't think of anything else. No, um, that's fair. That's fair. It doesn't not every week has to be a busy week. Not every week has to be up to its neck in, in events. However no. my week in in terms of what I've been doing, watching I've gone through quite a list. Firstly, I got to start the. I got to start it off with the discovery of peanut butter marmite. Yeah, what 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 what's up with that? <laughs> uh, what's up with that? What's up with that? What's up with that? <laughs> um, no, no, basically, basically, um, over the over the Christmas period, my mum went to stay with my brother at a sort of like over the over the Christmas period. Uh, some sort of holiday cottage Airbnb thing. Yeah. And apparently the kids, my brother's kids anyway, like, you know, like peanut butter and like Marmite. So they went and got a jar of it, this mixture. And yeah. my mum tried it and was like, oh, it's really good, actually. Yeah, it, was, it was a lot better than I thought it was. Anyway, she, she, um, she was, she's been... Well, I'm going to say honking on about it, but it's not true. It's just like she's mentioned it more than a couple of times. It's like, all right, I'll fucking try it. And yeah. I tried it on a slice of toast. And I tell you what, if you like dry roasted peanuts, it's mm-hmm. dry roasted peanut butter. Is Basically, that it? that's it. It's not peanut butter. It's, you know, like the old bar nuts one, sort of dry roasted yeah. ones, really salty really kind of got that sign of beefy beefy kind of taste and it's right. yeah so this week's episode is sponsored by marmite peanut butter um no <laughs> and um yeah so so i got so i got a jar of that and basically i think i put on a stone just eating it <laughs> it's nice but stuff though isn't it it is nice but i tell you what my vitamin b levels are through the roof my we must smell like <laughs> fucking asparagus by now but um, oh, the, the dust in the bottom of the dry, dry roasted peanuts bucket. Yeah, that's right. That that oh. weird, that weird shitty smell. That weird shitty sort of like farted in a ba- bag of beef and onion crisps. Um, <laughs> I, not that I can tell. I like I say, I've lost my sense of smell ages ago. But anyway, um, so yeah, so at some point we're all going to meet up and everyone's going to go. What is that smell? It's fucking man smells like peanut butter and marmite. What the fuck is wrong with him? Um. But away from that, um, uh, I've watched a few things. First thing on the list is The Eternals, which um, did oh, not... Oh, yeah, the story of Louise Redknapp and the other girls, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? I wish it fucking was. <laughs> because if you want if you want to watch a film where they basically explain the plot in the first 15 minutes and then spend the next 
two and a half hours essentially doing a Marvel take on the opening of Prometheus, then have at it. But it's not for me. It really wasn't. I found everything boring and slow. And I mean, it looked lovely, and it opened with it opened with you know Time by Pink uh, by Pink Floyd. Yes, it um, does. which I thought was very cool. Um, and you know, some of the effects works really good, and some of it isn't. I will be honest with you. Mm-hmm. And it does some of the Jack Kirby sort of new gods, old gods, sort of celestial stuff really well. But I just, my brain just kind of slid off it after a while. And I was just like, I don't care. I don't know who these people are. The film gives me no reason to give a shit who they are. And then and then the plot itself is basically a, a 12th, Doctor, <laughs> 12th Doctor episode and not a very good one at that. <laughs> it's a pretty awful one, actually. Um so yeah, so I was a bit like, never mind. I mean, they can't all be winners, but I just it would have been interesting if they if they'd gone. It looked beautiful. I just yeah. wished it had something behind it. Right. And but everyone just seems to be too sort of like we've been living in the shadows. We're a bunch of eternal people who have been on Earth for seven thousand years, manipulating the human race from behind the scenes for reasons. Oh, what we another dare- bunch of them? Fucking hell! Yeah, exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. What again? Yeah, yeah. The, the the Prometheus aliens are coming the other way, going. I'd oh, give it ten minutes. Of are you? Go on, and then <laughs> fucking off. <laughs> but um, yeah, and then essentially they're 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 there to stop the Earth being overrun by these. Devi- these other creatures called deviants, and essentially, there's more about this whole thing than than they know or is being let on. And there's this kind of setup that maybe one of the deviants is kind of getting stronger and learning powers, and he's going to get harder and harder to fight. And you know, the Earth is doomed if he's allowed to do what he's going to do. And then, then the film goes. Actually, I can't be fucked with that guy. Um, yeah, we'll 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 leave we'll leave him until the final act, and he just like vanishes. And it's like, oh, oh, all right then. And then the the Eternals themselves spend the next two hours all meeting up and having flashbacks to when they were back on the Earth when it was new, and you know the human race was just basically licking sand out of licking sand out the cracks of dinosaurs or something. I don't know. It was just it was just all a bit sort of like, oh, you humans are down there until we come along with the steam engine and the lasers and oh look at all that stuff and all our powers. So I was just like, I don't fucking care. I've 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 seen Chariot of, I've read Chariot of the Gods. I've seen Prometheus. I just don't need this with capes and lots of Lots of loving sort of like shots at four o'clock in the afternoon every day. You know, those golden hour shots. <coughs> Everything's bathed in the golden light and everyone turns around and goes, I love you. You're one of mine. You're one of us. We're all together. Well, it's out. Yeah, whatever. And um, it, it, is this like a, a Marvel thing then? Yes? yes, it's a Marvel thing. And so is this baked into, because I, I don't know how the Marvel stuff works. Is it all attached to each other, or is it all well, different universes? No, it's all baked into each other. There are elements from... There is always a nod, a wink, an element, or even a, an entire story thread that w- will appear in one film and then not resolve itself to another. Sometimes, like with Eternals, and this is not a spoiler, this is just the way it is, it's in like the first five minutes everyone's now referring to different characters so events that has happened so in infinity war thanos snapped everyone out of exist half the universe out of existence and then 5 years later they got snapped back in yeah. in end game so that's actually directly referenced as an event ah, okay. in that film in eternals and then there's other things like you know one of the characters finds out his um, girlfriend is an eternal and he goes so what are you like a wizard you know and she's like what and he's like like doctor strange and it's like name drop clunk yeah and it's that kind of thing so sometimes you get those clunky name drops and then other times you get like world changing events or events so like in early event early post avengers movies there was lots of reference to the battle of new york and all this kind of thing. And then 
in the Spider-Man movie, the first Tom Holland Spider-Man movie, there's bits of technology left over from that big fight, which are basically creating new villains for Spider-Man to fight, that kind of thing. Right, okay. So, you know, it's kind of like, it's not fully integrated as much as people would like to tell you it is, but there's like, there's always bits that aren't resolved and people come along and go, oh, actually, that's not a bad idea. I'll have that and put it in my film as a little bit of world building. Yeah, so it is all kind of connected. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, st- you start, I, well, there's two ways of watching it now, as I've just dis- as I discovered the other day. You can either watch it in the order they were released or you can watch them in chronological order in so far as you watch Captain America first, which is set in the 1940s. Yeah. And then the next one is Captain Marvel, which is set in the 1990s, and then Iron Man and onwards. So you can actually watch them. You can actually watch them in a number of orders, and they all interlink in special ways. I just, mm. I just, just watch them as they come out and see how you get on with them. Okay. I, I mean, you're not exactly a superhero person, anyway, are you? So. No, I'm not. But I'm interested in the way that they weave these sort of things and. Where um, does it stop? What well, I'm mm. just wondering because there's there's that trailer for that moon, moon night, moon yeah. door or something, moon, moon, moon or night, where it is <laughs> moon can <they> get? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pull down my trousers and moon or what? I, I yep. don't know. Mm. But that was interesting. That was mm. oh, okay. But well, then I'm worried that that's going to be. Well, you you need to watch ten years of movies. No, no, to, not, to get yeah, into not this, this one. Right. Not not oh, with okay. this one at all. Um, no. So, do you guys know about Moon Knight? I've read I've read some stuff about him. I've been I'm doing some I, research. I jumped on the wiki after watching the trailer. Right. I mean, I've seen him once, and that was in a Lego game. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. my knowledge is pretty limited. Um, they do in the comics, or the, certain fans describe him as a cross between. And this, I don't, I, I, I don't know if they actually know the, uh, the sort of like how this doesn't actually make sense. Um, they call him a cross between the Punisher and Batman, which is really strange because Batman is actually the Punisher with the locks on. Okay. So if you had Batman who didn't care about what he did, you'd have the Punisher who's quite happy to put a bullet in someone to get the job done. Right. Mm. So yeah, that statement of he's kind of like the Punisher and Batman crossover. He's like, well, it doesn't, that, that kind no, of it's just, it's just the, the thing is with all those kind of things is it's kind of reductive to make it easier for people to use big references. Like every, yeah. pretty much everyone knows what Batman is mm. and you could be guaranteed to find someone who knows what the pun- who or what the Punisher is. So yeah. you're kind of, it's just kind of like easy kind of shorthand, isn't it really? It is. But um, anyway. What I will say about him is there's a whole mental health angle with Moon Knight that's quite um it gets worse and worse for him as he goes on just because of um he's got like split personalities and stuff like that disassociated um personality disorder yeah um and it there's certain things that happen that 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 make him you there's there's like he just gets gradually worse and worse as he goes on he deteriorates mm. he's not a, he's not a well man at all no. Okay. Which is, um, you know, as I say, with this show, I know he's 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 doing quite an odd accent <laughs> in um, the thing, but I, I've got a feeling that that is not the only accent you're going to hear coming out no. of his mouth. No, it's not in this. So we'll see how that goes. No. But um, yeah. But to answer your question, Elton, I mean, the the one thing that Marvel films do tend to have, with the exception of the Avengers movies specifically is they tend to be fairly standalone and the and then the nods and the winks and the links and all this kind of thing are nice to know if you spot them but not essential if you don't gotcha mm. yeah and that tends yeah. to always be the way um moving on though um cuz i got a couple of other things um i've i saw the i i i literally binged watched the whole of the expanse season 6 um on saturday um with yeah, oh, with the exception of the last episode, which I did Sunday, but um, yeah, and I've got to say, I, I, I felt, I felt both elated that they got that far and they completed it, so yeah. as such as they could, 
but also slightly cheated because they did that whole Babylon 5 season 5 thing of juicy danglers for a season that may never come. And you're like, oh. So that'll be the spin off show that they're doing that they can't no, no, no. the expanse because of licensing issues. No, if I was if I was to take a guess, I'd say they're taking the expanse to another another pe- bunch of people to make season six and seven, if I was to take a guess. But right. the problem is knowing that you've only got six episodes in a season which is normally ten episodes long. And they keep doing this juicy Game dang- of Thrones. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they're doing this sort of juicy dangler thing for a big plot at the start of every episode on a on another planet. And it's like, ooh, this is getting interesting. Ooh, this is going to lead somewhere. Ooh, something's going to happen. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I guess mm-hmm. we'll. Um, I guess we'll come back to that another time. Then perhaps. Maybe. <laughs> we'll just leave that there. I'm we'll just leave this here there. for you. Okay. We'll stick mm. it on the fridge and we can mm. see it. Yeah. Ooh, see? There we go. Yeah, yeah. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. I mean, I understand why they did it, but given the short amount of time they had to do what they had to do, that meant that everything else felt slightly more rushed trying to make everything fit into six episodes. Whereas if they just got rid of those juicy tanglers for season seven that's never happening... You might have had ten, fifteen, twenty minutes an episode to actually fit a little bit more in. Um, mm. I mean, I mean, we can't obviously talk about things without spoilers, and it's still too yeah. new to say anything. But I mean, it was just more of the fact that you know, it, it, there's only one bit of that that sort of opening plot thing. Which has any relevance to the, the other to the other six episodes, and that's basically in episode six, which is essentially a kiss off, uh-huh. <laughs> and that's fine and dandy and lovely. But season six had so much to resolve, and then you're sort of sitting there going, "Okay, this is lovely. I hope you're doing something with this because if you're not, you're actually wasting time." precious time in an episode which doesn't have a lot of time to do a lot of stuff <laughs> it's like Urgh. that's always the payoff though isn't it if you have limited mm. time then people are always going to point that out because well, they do have yeah. a limited time you know there is only so much things that they can throw out and it's, it's the executive decisions as to what you get to see yeah i know i get that i completely understand and like i say i'm not knocking them for it insofar as they got decisions they've got their eye on a much bigger goal i mean my problem was just more the fact that if that <laughs> if you if you're going to cram 10 episodes into 6 don't introduce something brand spanky new. Right, yeah. Do you know what I mean? You're introducing a whole brand spanky new mystery. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it would be like watching watching a whole episode of Scooby-Doo trying to find out if Gameskeeper Willie was really the <laughs> the, the, the the mummy and then finding out right at about, about five minutes before they get them. But every time they get close to getting the mummy, it cuts back to finding a serial killer going down the, fe- going down the road. And it's like... When's Scooby Doo gonna solve the serial killer problem? Well, he it will in a minute. I'm sure he will in a minute. And then it keeps going on, and, yeah. he, and then it keeps cutting back to the serial killer. He's like, this is really gonna go somewhere. And then all of a sudden, the fucking thing goes, and it just ends. You're like, what? What about the fucking serial killer? I knew the mummy was groundskeeper Willie. What the fuck? Anyway, but that that's their that elevator pitch, isn't it? Yeah, I know. It's on screen, so. Hmm. But their elevator pitch also relies quite heavily on, presumably, whoever buys this and carries on season seven and eight, Mm. actually buying the rest of the seasons off of Amazon. I mean, you know, that's just me. So that's that's why I'm kind of like, are you really going to get another season? I mean, good if you can, but really? Anyway. And did then, you enjoy it? I did enjoy it. I did yeah, enjoy it. I'm cool. not going to knock it. I'm just going to say I just felt it was rushed because they tried to put extra stuff in which didn't need to be introduced. Yeah, that's my only big criticism. Um, and finally, because I'll just wrap it up, there is um, Peacemaker, which I've seen three episodes of. 
Okay. And what did Which, you think? John Cena. Uh, no. I think I think it it's not nearly as crazy as the int- the intro title sequence suggests. Um which has been doing the rounds on YouTube. It's funny in places. It's kind of interesting in others. It's as close as you get to a sort of, I suppose, a Deadpool style TV show where every where the, every superhero is an asshole and every yeah. person in it swears a lot. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and and there's also a CG eagle which sticks its head out of cars and <laughs> takes takes in the air. I mean, it's. There was there was a funny throwaway gag with a with a with a possum, which yeah. did have me laughing. Um, I don't know how much of a spoiler it is, but it's essentially just there's there's a massive explosion. There's a massive explosion in the car park. The police rush to to arrive, but before the police arrive, um, Peacemaker's eagle drops a possum as a gift to Peacemaker. <laughs> <laughs> but it, and everyone, everyone, everyone scatters. The police turn up, and there's this massive, like, sort of sixty foot wide crater, and right in the middle is a possum. And there's all the police going, <laughs> "How's the possum still in one piece?" And um, that kind of sums it up, really. It's kind of got this kind of weird, quirky sense of humor. And for those of you who don't know, it's it's basically the, the, an extension of the Suicide Squad movie that came out last year. Or was it the year before? I can't remember now. I'm losing track. Yeah, it was last year. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, John Cena's Peacemaker has been released from hospital, but drawn back into Task Force X to do um, do basically uh, government sanctioned killings hmm. um, with his little team. But his team are a complete bunch of fuck ups. And he's a fuck up. And his dad played by Robert Patrick is is a fucking gun nut white supremacist <laughs> and John Cena also has a, a, a the peacemaker character has a, a pet a sidekick pet called Eagly um which is a golden eagle yeah yeah it's it's funny i mean it's it's like i say the the title sequence which gave me a lot of faith kind of over over promises and I, it really, the series only gets going in episode three, so that's as far as I've got. But I have enjoyed it. It's just, I think you kind of come away thinking, ooh, this is going to be really funny, slightly quirky and kooky, and then sometimes it's not. And you're just like, mm. yeah. But the soundtrack, if you like 80s hair metal, I tell oh, you, yeah. you are going to love it. Because I tell you what, there's a sequence... Mm-hmm. And this is no spoiler. There is a sequence with post-coital John Cena standing in his pants in the middle of a room, mm-hmm. <laughs> singing to choir the choir boys, "I don't love you anymore." And <laughs> 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 so the soundtrack's pretty good um, if you're into that sort of thing. It's a scene, I tell you, not one you forget in a hurry. I love it. <laughs> so anyway, there you go. Uh, that's my my week. So, uh, Peacemakers on HBO Max. It, let's move on very quickly to some feedback. Um, we did like last week the Lighthouse, or Robert Pattinson's Wanking Shed, um, as it's, <laughs> and um, so we did get some feedback from the episode. Um, David Renain over in uh, New Zealand um, said um, was talking about my um, alter ego. Which I found from two random words on a piece of paper: earthquake Wilberforce. Ah, yes. <laughs> and apparently, um, in the early eighties, this is this is David now. Um, in the early eighties, there was a kids' sci-fi show called Under the Mountain about a pair of twins battling a giant alien slugs that lived under volcanoes. Not sure about earthquakes specifically, but they did have geothermal connections. Anyway, the aliens had humanish disguises as a family of weirdos by the name of Wilberforce. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. And it had Sam Neill in it. So, yeah. So, Earthquake Wil- Wilberforce, technically speaking, already been done. I was distraught. Um, Alec McPherson uh, also wrote in to say, glad you guys enjoyed this film. While it's a big, a bit of a big brain serious cinema movie to a point, 
It's also a ton of fun, which I think your conversation gave the sense of in terms of some of the themes of The Lighthouse, masculinity, identity, escaping personal past, etc. The, the movie it reminded me the most of was Waking Fright. Couldn't have had a more different setting, however, but it's playing in the same sad box. I haven't seen Waking Fright. Have you seen that, Jim? No, I don't think so. Mm, no, I'll have to Google that up, actually. But anyway, so Alan McPherson, thank you, sir. And then we have um, someone called Teresa Burnside. Who's that? Mm. Um, <laughs> writes in saying, I'm never going to look at a seagull in the same way again. <laughs> Which is fair. <laughs> uh, and then Jeffrey Mark Hyman uh, said, I figured it would be a stimulating discussion. Hold on. Stimulating discussion. <laughs> 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 and you all rose to the occasion admirably. Um, oh, God. <laughs> yes. Hold on. Ah, <laughs> <do>. Thank you. <laughs> that'll do, pig. Um, and then finally, uh, Martin, I think he was just talking to you, Darren, saying, did you know that Toast of Tinsel Town is all on iPlayer already? Yes. I've, I've, I've watched most of the first episode, and it's just so much back on form. You yeah. Know, it's, it's come back with a vengeance, nice. um, especially the um, the strictly come dancing throw away gag that they do on that the two second the two second (laughs) clip (laughs) they show (laughs) toast on strictly come dancing is just (laughs) worth the price for a mission alone (laughs) okay fair enough i'll uh i'll bear that one in mind Uh, but yeah um Mm. you'll find a new way to express your anger as well Lee, yeah. for days and days on end <laughs> when you watch this right, that's good mm. oh cool I can't wait I, I am going to catch up with it now now that I've got Ray the bloody out. purchase Ray bloody purchase <laughs> anyway yes right well, there you go. So um, that's all the feedback uh, for this week's episode. And if anybody would like to send any feedback in for this episode or any other episode, by all means, jump on the old uh, Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash Black Dog Podcast, or get in contact with us through the Contact Us page on the blackdogpodcast.com or get on Twitter at blackdogpodcast.com. I think people on Twitter are surprised to learn that I have been on Twitter actually posting and reposting shit since oh last week consistently woo Woo. so you might actually catch me while i'm going while i'm still in in the happy mood with with twitter i'm sure it'll change but you know for the moment give it five minutes (laughs) give it five minutes so yes get in contact let us know what you think anything you want to send feedback in by all means do so right let's wrap this up now because we are now going to go on to this week's movie (sighs) Brush your teeth, prepare your um, sickness meds, because we're going to be doing Guns Akimbo. Roll the jingle. I see it's nearly five o'clock. I'm here at home, my work's all done. No question where I'll be tonight A place of cinematic fun It's the lockdown, but I will not pout Oh, my friends, I won't be seeing this out Alone There's the Elton and Jim and Darren uh, All sitting far apart for social distance uh, We're at the Shutton Cinema Down in the bunker of Shun Down in the bunker of Shun Fellas, it's been nearly five years. You're gonna let me out now or what? No.
Right, take two. Guns Akimbo stars lots of people. Jason Lee Howden directed it. Daniel Radcliffe's in it. Samara Williams in it. Quicker, um, quicker, quicker, quicker. Okay, quicker, Reece quicker, Darby's move, in it. Move, move. Ha ha ha! Isn't he funny? He was in Jumanji. Diddly diddly dee. Um, and it had a budget of fifteen million dollars. Jim, how much did it make at the box office? Six nifter. Right, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Darren, how much did it make? Uh, 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 a bag, a skag, and um, some face tattoos. Brilliant. Uh, Elton, what about you? Um, I, I can't think of anything. Oh. Uh, uh, damn. I'm damn. just going to go back to my original uh, three dick shots. Three dick shots. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. um, we have established in the previous recording, which had not happened, that none of us have seen this film. None of us have seen this film, have we? No. No. No, 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 we haven't. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, well, seeing as it's your your choice, Elton, ha ha ha, we yeah. all laughed. Yep, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, rolling for all, running for the um, uh-huh. so, <laughs> because How it's... much did it make at the box office, I wonder? Oh, I, I wonder. wonder. It made $1 million <gasps> for a $15 million <gasps> budget. <laughs> $1 million? <laughs> yes, just $1 million. That's, That's it. I've, terrible. I've, I've isn't got that it? bit. I've, yeah, it was shit. Yeah. It's pretty shit. What? What? No, what? There you go. See, ladies and gentlemen, we can do this podcast in at least five minutes. Um, <laughs> so anyway, there you go. We're now all caught up. Right. So $1 million. Thanks very much. And then I said, it's because it's your choice, Elton. Yes. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha, ha. Yes, it is you get my to choice. Go, you get to go first. We're, none of us have seen it. So, Elton, what did you think of this film? Top line review. Well, I, I remember sitting here and uh, going, oh, do you know what? I really want to watch that with my friends and then discuss about it later on. <laughs> Did you uh, now? And I think this is where the break comes in. Yep, that's exactly Slice. where the break. Yep, that's where the break comes in. <laughs> and Keep now going. we are on new territory. Yes, and Hurrah. now we can slow down and take a breath. Hold hold up, Mr. Frodo. If I take one more step, I I've, I've never been this far away from my house or my potty <laughs> or a pie. <laughs> <laughs> well there you okay, go okay yeah. so um yeah my choice I, mm. I bet you're glad that i chose this this time round, eh mm-hmm. oh yeah oh yeah uh, why did i choose this i i forget why i chose this you chose this because you weren't going to be here and all three of us had secret secret squirrel choices and this you picked true, darren yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's why. Ha! Take that. <laughs> <laughs> what, okay, what did I think of it? I, I thought it was terrible to begin with. Okay in the middle and dropped off towards the end. And I wondered why we actually watched it. Okie dokie. Um, Jim, what about you? Uh, I thought it was fun. It was rubbish, but it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> and I spent the last two days working out where I've seen bits of it before. <laughs> Every other movie that's ever existed. <laughs> Okie dokie. Um, Darren, what about you? Uh, pretty much the same as Jim, really. You know, that was it. It's just kind of like, oh, this isn't going to be anything. I'm going to need to go afterwards and study in a Christian science reading room. <laughs> um, so uh, I'll just go with it. And uh, yeah, you know, I, I kind of enjoyed it. Um Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I fucking hated it. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, I fucking did. Did you? Yes. Wow. Yes. I couldn't it's... tell from your Facebook post. I really couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shocked. Yeah, I know. I was trying to keep the powder dry for today, but I just couldn't. You couldn't, could you? Couldn't I couldn't take it, could you? 17 minutes. I lasted 17 <laughs> minutes before I felt physically ill. Because of that fucking camera work. Oh, the rollover camera stuff. Oh, man. Oh, but it was... it was like a, a, a new shot that they were like, well, hang on, we got a new gadget here. Let's use this 50 times during our own film. Well, <laughs> it goes back on Monday. Get the money's worth quick. <laughs> yeah, film everything <laughs> twice, 15 times, and then we'll cut between every piece of footage to stretch the fucking film out. Oh, God. <coughs> oh god the film if you just took the actual original scenes as they were filmed and put in the can the whole film is probably only about seven minutes long but anyway uh, yeah yeah 
no, I, I wasn't. I wasn't a fan. There was bits of it I, I liked towards, as pretty much like Elton. There was bits of it I liked towards the middle, but then when it goes goo goo gaga crazy, crazy go bonkers land again in the sort of last third, I was just like, oh fuck off, I'm out. <laughs> I think it, it's in the middle where they actually start dropping a plot. Yes, and the camera... That's where it starts to get a bit, okay, now it's trying something. Mm, the cameraman puts the camera on a tripod and goes off for a fag for an hour. Mm. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyway, mm. so this is this is definitely um, a bit of a departure for old Danny Rad. Old ha- has has a Potter himself. <laughs> How did we think he did? <laughs> I Get- thought he was very good, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, I I thought I it took a while to get over the accent, mm. but once I got over that, then it was like, oh, do you know what? He's not too bad at this. Mm. This old acting malarkey, is he? He's not like a one-trick <laughs> pony. He's pretty good at what he's doing. Granted, this is terrible. But what he's doing with it, he seems to be having fun and producing some pretty good stuff. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go along with that. I, as much as I... So post-pottery, he seems to have done a whole heap of oddball films. Mm. Um, we... we uh, variable in quality, but I kind of, I, re- I respect that kind of. Well, that sounds interesting. I'll give it a go. Yeah, because you know a lot of these sort of, I mean, actors often carry the can for the mistakes of producers, directors, and studios. Because mm. they're the people. Oh, we know his name. It's his fault. You know, but you've got little power in, in as an actor. You give your performance. You have no idea if the cameraman was blind or on crack, whether the editor is a cat. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, you have no idea what's going to happen, or whether some you know, coked up Nimno will go, "Hey, we'll move, we'll move the third act to the fifth act, and that'll make everything more sense in post." <laughs> but um, I mean, you know, it, it, I think I really respect the fact that he's just kind of like, "Yeah, yeah I'm just going to, you know." Is that, that sounds like crazy. I'll do that. Yep. Mm. Play dead body. Yep. Do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, mean, I think the best, I mean, he's really good in the hammer woman in black. Yes. I mean, he's just so really tortured in that. It's seems true. It's mm. a really good yeah. performance. Um, and he's also good in a, a Joe Hill novel at uh, Horns. I haven't seen. Oh that. yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah seen he's, that. he's really yeah. good in that as well. Yeah. 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 But, mm. uh, in this, I kind of, I I marked him highly on um, the the, the uh, Bruce Campbell uh, school of acting. <laughs> what wide eyed and being <laughs> thrown Campbell, into things? <laughs> yeah, well, Bruce Campbell, you know, said you know doing these films is hard. It's actually proper hard work. You know, people go at Jack Nicholson, what a great actor he is, and say, well, yeah, you know, let's you get knocked on your ass a few times and hit by a tree. Then I'll say, hey, that guy's really working. <laughs> 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 and uh, I think Radcliffe in this, he was really working. He took a beat. He did. He did indeed. <laughs> Which, you know, I really, I thought he did it very well as well. You know what I mean? If, um, some people, you know, can't pull off this stuff. Mm. Uh, but where he could, and he clearly just literally threw himself into it on several occasions. <laughs> mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He's hiding in a cloth bin. Um, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. What about you, Dal? Right. Um, yeah, I thought he was very good in this as well. Uh, at first, mm. I didn't recognise who was doing the narration. When I realised it was him, it's like, wow. Mm. His American accent is actually pretty damn good. Mm. You know? And it didn't, as far as I could tell, it didn't falter for a second. No. Um, I did like uh, his interpretation of going to go, trying to go for a wee. Well, you've got two guns stapled <laughs> to your hands. Yeah. Um, that was quite funny. Didn't uh, need to see Little Potter, though, did we? No, no. Although it did look like a, a, Wolves, a Wolves sort of, you know, beef sausage. <laughs> pork uh, banger. Pork banger. There we go. Yes. <laughs> Harry Pork Banger. Well, let's be honest. You know, that would have been funny if he shot it off then. Yeah. <laughs> because then it really would have been a pork banger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Mm. Um, so yeah, I thought he did very well in this. Mm. Um, so I, I mean, I've seen him in a couple of things as well. Uh, from what I remember, yeah, Horns is another one, and mm. I thought he was really good in that. 
um, he's a bit like Robert Patterson. You know, mm. he's been like the, the the sort of like the poster boy for a big sort of young teen slash kids sort of film franchise. And he's had to go extreme to really try and burn that off, mm. you know, to be taken seriously as an actor. So this is why he's done what he's done. This is why Robert Patterson does what he does. The sort mm. of films he appears in. Yeah. Um, mm. But uh, yeah, I, I enjoy this performance Yeah, in this. Yeah. You know. Fair enough. I mean, I... You go on. Sorry. He does frantic very well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta give him his due. I mean, whatever else I might think of the film. I mean, he, he does... He does pull off that kind of oh shit moments yep. quite quite well, <laughs> and um, yeah, and the whole thing, the whole sort of like ee- tension moments of him trying to like pick up the phone with his yes. teeth and drop it into his coat pocket and shit like that, <laughs> like hitting stuff with his nose. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, yeah. you got to give him the due for that. But I mean, okay then. So getting, I mean, getting away from that. I mean, what about the film in general? I mean. There's always this phrase knocked about um, called, which I've seen before, called hyperkinetic. And normally, hyperkinetic usually means that the cameraman is on a paint mixer in a fucking tumble dryer thrown down some <laughs> stairs. And then the camera, and then the digital guy, the digital VFX geezers just stick a ton of After Effects on it, usually with a lot of purple. And then. We have music going, you know, yeah. and that, like the crank movies. Yeah. Yes, like the crank, crank movies. And, what was the other one? There was another one where it's like first person. Oh, oh, hardcore Henry. That's yeah. it. Yeah, which also made me feel sick, but um, I didn't even finish that one. <laughs> um, but yeah, um. How do we? F- how do you feel about those films? I mean, because I mean, I saw. I mean, obviously, I really liked Crank because it was just yeah. stupid and mad, and it knew it was. Mm. But this really, I don't know. It felt a bit more un unfocused. How do you okay. guys feel about it? Go on. Right. Well, um, I've, I've just as a uh, an aside here about calling something something new right okay Mm. trying to think up a phrase for it ever since i saw um charlie brooker's screen dumps where he talks about if somebody's trying to sell you a product and they Mm. come out with a word for a process Mm. like you know this is super elon text uh technology or something Mm. like that it's like there it means it's shit Mm. right and he did that. He did that with the. What was it? He used a, a shampoo commercial as a as yeah. an example. Ever since I've seen that, it that stuck with me. Mm. So whenever I've somebody's brought out a product or somebody's been in a film and it's like you know we're filming it in super duper cockamation or something <laughs> like that, yeah. then it's normally it, it's like fucking pretentious, and you know it just means somebody's sped up the camera or they they they've chucked salt in the mixture or done something you know they're wearing a hat when they 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 fucking created this thing or something like that mm. you know that sort of thing when you say hyper what was it hyper hyperkinetic what? hyperkinetic i just think why don't you fuck off seriously not you but it's like <laughs> no that, it's all right that, I'll, 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 leave the pl- I'll leave the i'll leave i'll leave it i'll leave it recording you just tell me when the hits stop and i'll leave you guys to it i'm quite happy <laughs> but then no, no, like, it, hyperkinetic is in cinematic terms what uh poly polysemic is in literary reviews for novels yeah. it was a brilliant polysemic novel what does it mean He's got lots of fucking words in. That's all it means. Now, fuck off. It's like it's like yeah. super marionation, right? Okay, and you're like, what's that? It's like, well, it's got puppets in it. You know, sorry, Jerry Anderson. I enjoyed it, quite a bit of your work, but fucking hell, come on, mate. Yeah. You know, super marionation. It's like... The one, the one I always come back to is the is the um, L'Oreal ad with um, Jen. Uh, what's yeah. her name? Jen- oh, I can't remember her name from Blood. Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Aniston. Here's where the she, science part. Where she goes, here's the science, and then the first thing they come up with is that they've used a new chem- a new um, emollient called Boswellox. Boswellox. And it's like, 
You're not even trying at this point, are you? It's literally just like you are literally saying it's bollocks, but everyone's looking at lovely Jen's hair and her perky boobs. Well, there's the uh, we've we look we we've landed on this planet looking for this mineral that's mm. really really hard to, it's hard to obtain. It literally, we, it, <laughs> it's it unobtainable. What, what are they call it? Unobtainium. Oh, they yep. took a long while to fucking think of that, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, Dude, Did that you? was a real stretch of the fucking imagination. How much he earned from uh, getting that name? I don't know, yeah. but I think I think I think the pub was doing happy hour in like oh, five minutes, and they so. needed to go home. I think his takeaway was off. That's what it is. <laughs> That's yes. where he thought of that one. <laughs> Jesus fucking yeah. hell, obtainium. Go but, fuck off. But what did you think of it, like the filmmaking in this? I mean, the the the, 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 the cinematography, the kind of crazy overlays shit. I mean... Well, I suppose it's, um, you know, it's a good way of expressing anxiety, you know, which is what he was feeling through most of this. So... Um, I suppose it's a good way of putting that across. Whether you needed to do some of the shots that, you know, get done in this, I don't know. But um, it kind of put it across to me that he wasn't exactly uh, feeling calm about things. No, fair enough. We say. What about What about you, Elton? I don't mind the style of these types of movies, like Crank and, and them. Hmm. I'm trying to think of another one that we've covered very similar to that. Well, there's, there's, there was, there was when we were doing batshit crazy movie month. Yeah, there we was, did loads, didn't we? We did loads. There was yeah. that. It was shoot 'em up. There was, mm. um, oh god, I'm trying to remember them myself now. It's all right. Go on. Anyway, carry on. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll Google it while we're at it. <laughs> I, I think they have their place. Mm. They are there for entertainment purposes. You're really not supposed to take it any. Mm. At any point, seriously, you're not going to be doing a thesis on this, are you? I'll be doing feces on it, but yeah. <laughs> but mm. yeah, I, I think they have their place, and they're they're fun. They could be really good background mm. movies as well to to work on, like a homework, or mm. if you've you know you now go into pubs where they have a screen on. You can mm. have this on in the background, and it it adds to like the wallpaper of the actual pubs and 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 entertainment places that you're at. Mm. So I I think they fit in. Yeah, I think they work. I think you have to be in the right frame of mind to come into it, and and it really does help what you're going into as well. You you can't really go into. Well, actually, I'm feeling quite mellow today. Um, I'm going <laughs> to draw myself a pot of tea. I'm going to mm. get myself my favourite shortbread biscuits. Lovely. And I'm going to put them on this film that I've heard about so mm. much. He's got that lovely fellow, Daniel Radcalf. <laughs> Daniel uh, Radcalf? Rad, Dan, Rad, uh, Danny, uh, Danny Radcalf? Uh, Ra- <laughs> Danny Ralph's Clark? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Daniel, Dan, Daniela Ralph's uh, It's good. Guns Akimbo. This this should be super, shouldn't it? Anyway, and then all of a sudden you're like, rah, rah, and someone's got all your brains out on the coffee table. It is, it's mm. disgusting. Mm. So you you kind of need to know what you're getting in this. There there is a a time and mm. place for these. That's fine. Yeah. But and you you this film has to have these over the top shots where you have the. Uh, rolling over and going like first person and real close cameras shooting up their noses and it 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 mm. has that kind of vibe going along with it and I, th- I think if you're prepared to go into these movies then you you can sit back and just enjoy it for what it is mm. if you're going into it thinking this is going to be uh, Pride and Prejudice then man you're in for a treat <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. Put in your claim for whiplash, no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What What about you, Jimmy? You of the same mind with this sort of thing, or? Well, it's it's one sort of those. This is kind of um, it's it's is a kind of a style mm. for these sort of films, and it does kind of uh, it. Once you see a few opening shots, you kind of know what kind of thing you're in for, mm. and that's fine. I, th- I think in this, I think in this case, some of it worked 
and some of it was just kind of less would have been more. Because mm. uh, at some stage he was just kind of like, like you put four four times the maybe shots in there you needed to be hyperkinetic. Mm. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? You, you came off as hyperactive. Different word, different spelling. <laughs> Look, there's a book. Look it up. Yeah, exactly. Have you got time? Are <laughs> oh, the lights flashing too much? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Take take some Advil and just calm down for a second. <laughs> Deep breaths. Yeah. Don't remember we put you on the naughty step again. <laughs> Having said that, you're going on the naughty step now anyway. Because mm. actually, it wasn't so much the unnecessary um, shots and whirling the camera that actually got on my tits. Mm. What got on my tits was that someone didn't stump up the money or sort it out, mm. or worse, thought they were cleverer by not using the original ballroom blitz by the suite, mm. or the original you spin me right round by dead or alive. Mm -hmm. All the original Wheel Wild Shell Baggy Pop. <laughs> and we had them formed by three teeth and three zeros. <laughs> and it's kind of, I hate this modern trend for new sort of welcome country bands going, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll cover an old classic. And they just don't get it right. No. And it's kind of, oh, yeah, we're modern and edgy. We'll, you know, we'll give this old song some life. And it's kind of, I'm sorry, the Sweets Ballroom Blitz sounds far more frenetic than your fucking bullshit three teeth <laughs> and if i meet you you will have three teeth less <laughs> yeah well just think though if they used ballroom blitz they would have been another couple of million in the hole for that one million dollar return <laughs> I'm, I'm sure i'm sure there's the rights to that from the suite aren't expensive <laughs> yeah yeah well they need they need to, they need to pay for development yeah <laughs> or something but the thing is they got they actually got proper super freak Mm. And the uh, I don't believe, think they got the proper never surrender as well, mm. and the pro and they definitely got the shit where shit goes down from Citrus Hill. Citrus Hill. <laughs> that's, what, that's what Reese Darby calls them in the movie. Yeah. You know that song where it was it Citrus Hill? Yeah. <laughs> Citrus Hill. Mm. But it's when you when you get that mismatch, you got some covers and then the originals. That sort of gets me twitching. Mm. He's got you know, all originals or all covers, one way or the other. Yeah. It's like walking around a supermarket, isn't it? And and sometimes you have like the the oddly dubbed versions, like the karaoke versions. Yes. <laughs> mm. Yeah, or the or was it the Stars on Forty Five albums from oh, the seventies and eighties? <laughs> yeah, mm. where they couldn't afford it, but they could afford the right to the song, but not necessarily the performance. So they could so they could cut down the price. <laughs> James James last Enter Sandman or something like that. You know, just... <laughs> I I did used to love those Top of the Pops albums. Star, yeah, that's it. Yeah, Top of the Pops, ones, Stars those, on Forty Five, all those things. Yeah, but it'd have like you know, as you say, Ballroom Blitz, but it would be by a group called The Sweat, not <laughs> not, <laughs> not the Sweet, you know, the Perspirators, Perspirators, yeah, <laughs> you know, or uh, I don't know. Um, Bye bye baby by the Whitley Bay City Rollers, that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's exactly it. I mean Yeah, I well, I mean I mean the music the music to me at that point I I I have to confess blurred all into one. I I I I find with the that kinetic kind of camera work, you know, let's do something crazy, let's do something weird, is it it, as you say, Jim, it's less is more, but I think also it's people who know what they're doing with it, rather than people who just try it because they've seen all these shots in other in other films. And it's interesting because I I looked him up, but the director is a, really a visual effects guy, um, and that's that is it. That is his his mm. thing, and I found it interesting because you start to go ah. So just because he can do this, he is. You know, he's you know he's doing the visual effects for for all sorts of crazy films. You know, like Man of Steel and Wolverine and Gods of Egypt and all this kind of stuff. And it's like Gods of Egypt. Yeah, I know. We haven't oh, done that one. Word. We have yet to pull the pull the trigger on that one. But you know how it goes. 
And um, he also... I've, I've got Jeff Goldblum on the line here. He wants to know if he can just butt into our podcast and do that line from Jurassic Park <laughs> that he does. Because yeah. you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's all, it's all right, Jeff. We've we've done it for you, mate. We've 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 mentioned it. You, you can go back to sleep now. All right, mate. Yeah. You, you were so so taken with the <laughs> thinking you should do this. You never thought to why you could. You've just done the what? quoting. You see, this but is back it. You've, to done front. Vocal, you've done the vocal <laughs> equivalent of what those those musical tracks yeah, are doing. Exactly. We, get, we got we got we got Beth Beth Gold. Um, or, Go. Yeah, Beth, Beth Goldblum, <laughs> Beth Goldbar, to do the the quote. And then fuck than, it up. Yeah, and then fuck it up completely. Bob yeah. Bob Frazzle Snacks um, <laughs> is here to do that. Uh, a really bad Jeff Goldblum impression. Yeah, a, su- a supermarket version yeah. of <laughs> Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. Not so much ballroom blitz, more like supermarket sweep. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but I mean, the thing with those, the thing with that mad camera stuff is, like with Crank, for example, it was exactly the same. You know, all the Commodore sixty four sort of lurid colours flickering over the top of things, music going balls to the wall, absolutely insane. You know, sequences with you know, bloody Jason Statham literally electrocuting himself and running down the road with a massive erection, which is just like you're going, what am I watching? <laughs> but. It's so frenetic and so... It, it seems like it has its own language. It's like a visual language and you kind of tune into it and you go with it. This couldn't decide whether it was going to do one thing or another. So like the thing with the guns, mm-hmm. where he's got the fucking numbers all over the guns. And it's like... Yeah. And then, you know, sometimes he fires it and it goes lefty, righty, lefty, righty sort of thing. And it's like, no... Yeah, you know, if you're going to do that, do that, but do it all the way through and don't just stick it to him. And it's just like, next thing you know, it's going all mad and he's doing it. And then all of a sudden the, the film just goes, nah, forget that gimmick now. I, I've got something else I can do now. I've got another thing in the toolbox I'm going to throw at the camera. And that was what was annoying me. I got, I got annoyed and bored by the fact it was just chucking so much at the screen. Mm-hmm. But half the time, you're sitting there going, "What am I spo- how am I supposed to be feeling about this? Am I supposed to be feeling excited? Because it's not exciting me. It's just making me feel slightly nauseous. And then, mm. am I supposed to be impressed by the fact that you've motion tracked a fucking number counter to his, to his guns? And then forgot it because you run out of time? I mean, See, and that weirdly, was- I, mm. I didn't mind the gun thing. Well, I, it, that's just I, I an example. Was, it wasn't really the main thing, but yeah, I, go on. But the thing that annoyed me was in the very opening of it, where you, mm. you have him walking, it's like a sideways shot of him, and then all of a sudden he, he has like a rocket launcher painted on him, mm. and he bumps into someone, and there's like uh, rings like from Sonic bouncing around all over the place, and he's, yeah. okay, we're, we're already there, aren't we? We're yeah. already at max peak of yeah. this is batshit crazy and we haven't even started anything yet mm. we haven't built up to that yet yeah yeah i mean that's that's the problem isn't it it's just it it doesn't ramp up it just happens it's you know it's it's my it's my old my old line about the michael bolton thing you know if you start at 11 mate you can't go up in the crescendo because <laughs> you can't you you start singing <laughs> you start singing fucking head ah! will pop off yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, you're singing like this and you're in the fucking first verse. There's nowhere else to go. Oh man, he does that on um what's it, when a man his version of When a Man Loves a Woman. Yeah. It's like he's already straining the fucking greens on that one. You know? <laughs> straining when a man loves a woman. Are you t- are you are you singing about it or are you shouting it at us? Yeah. You know, and now there's a key the change. Yeah. 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 yeah, the key change. You can literally you can literally hear the sound of the fountain of Fountain of blood pouring out of his ears. <laughs> it's the uh, it's the Bert Quok <laughs> manoeuvre, okay. <laughs> when they had him on Harry Hill, and he goes, and now here's Bert Quok who will attempt to talk to chickens, and he goes, <laughs> I'm here to talk to chickens, and there's a chicken on the table, and he looks at it, and he just goes, Hello, chicken. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> and that's stupid, but it made me laugh like a fucking <laughs> cry. <laughs> 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 Hello, chickens. That's it. There you go. That's that's our new phrase, isn't it? It's, a, it's the Burt Quok maneuver. <laughs> Burt Quok maneuver. The, that's it. The yeah. Burt Quok maneuver. <laughs> you know, you know, if a, if a line is good, spoken. Shatner sp- nearly got thrown out of Starfleet for using that in a simulation. <laughs> <laughs> But, so, you know. yeah, if, if, if a line's <laughs> worth speaking softly, it's also worth say, being said at 400 <laughs> decibels. Exactly. <laughs> and, that's, and that's the thing. This film is exactly that. It just goes, hello, chickens, and it ain't even fucking started. <laughs> I'm going to look that clip up. I've got to put that on. I'm going to have to put that on Facebook there for the guys. I'm going so, um, to I'm gonna have to have that on my soundboard now, not just the lighthouse yeah. foghorn. I'm going to have to have, hello, chickens. Um, <laughs> I just put his last name. Is it, is it, is it K- KWOK, was it? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. Yeah, Bert Quok, <laughs> hello, chickens. <laughs> but it was like, there's, there was a, there's another good example, and I'm going to stick this in the Facebook chat for us. And, you know, feel free if you want to look at it while we're recording. It really doesn't matter because it's literally only a second, you know, a few seconds long. But it's, there's a there's a moment in Taken Three, and yes, I did watch it. There's a moment mm. in Taken Three where Liam Neeson jumps over a fence, right? <laughs> now, really, it, by Taken Three, he should have been up at, at the courts, for, yeah, for being yeah. a very very poor father. But you watch, if you watch <laughs> this thing, you watch how many cuts it takes for him just to jump over the fucking fence. That. <laughs> Is guns akimbo all the way through? <laughs> you watch it. Oh, no, well, I don't mind waiting. There we go. <laughs> the link is there, Brian. And for those of you who don't know, I'm going to put it in the Facebook. I'm going to put it on the Facebook group as well. But if you want to have a look, it's called Brian Mills jumps a fence. And just, <laughs> just watch him jump the fence. And it's like one, two, three, four. He's going over a fucking fence. Stop the cutting. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hello, chickens! <laughs> oh, man. And, oh, oh, hang on a minute. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah? You're watching it? I'm going to. Hang go on, on then. Go for it. Go for it. Go on. Count the cuts. Right. Oh, my word. Yeah. What was it again? What was his name? It's called there's Brian. about 20 cuts there. Eh? 20 cuts. He literally takes six seconds to jump a fence, and there's 20 cuts in it. It's Brian, Brian. Mills jumps a fence. I put it in the Facebook chat. But that, to me, <laughs> sums up Guns Akimbo in a nutshell. It's just like piss poor editing, direction which has <laughs> literally no reason to do what it does, and then some yeah. random visual effects shite over the top of it. And when people question it, he goes, well, you know, it's hyperkinetic, isn't it? It's like, no, it's not fucking hyperkinetic. It's just you've got no sense of control <laughs> and you've let yourself loose on this film, which should have only been like 20 minutes long, but your Brian Mills jumps the fence. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. Isn't it? Did it? Did it jump the fence? Have you seen the extended cut of it, by the yeah. way? The yeah. Brian Mills jumps he's, the fence. He's just constantly <laughs> going over the fence. It takes him about 25,000 cuts. It's, Brian Mills jumps the fence, improved times seven. <laughs> there, there must be like a 10-hour video on YouTube of just him jumping the fence. Oh, God. Hold on. I'm posting this one. Oh. In there, yeah. <laughs> Fight is still going on. Oh, Jesus Christ. No. I'm watching on. it now. Brian Mills jumps a fence, director's cut, extended cut. <laughs> yeah, there's one that says improved time seven, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, what the fuck? That poor bastard. <laughs> just... There is a 10 hour video of it. Is there? It's, 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 a ten hour one. it's when it cuts to the fucking dog as well. It's just like they're flipping the dog left and right. It's just. So... There you go. Oh, Have a look at that one. <laughs> oh, it's, it shouldn't be as funny as it is. But... <laughs> I've already seen it twice. I'm only 15 seconds into this 10-hour movie. 
Jumps a fence, watch that seven times. <laughs> you got guns and Kimbo. <laughs> I think there should be just an episode where we watch this, review this, yeah, yeah and have this on in the background as well. That's it. That's it. That, just do a podcast where we have to find new things to find. <laughs> things I like about Bromius jumping a fence. <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. There's one here called Taken Three, but with more cuts. The fence cut. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Oh Jesus. Anyway. <laughs> Brian Mills jumps a fence. <laughs> that, mm, That's genius. It is. It is. Um, I've lost me. Like, <laughs> in the in the comments. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You've got yeah. to see this. You've oh, got this to, is this right. is great podcast. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> likes sitting there right? going three or four idiots watching watch Liam Neeson jumping a fence. Okay, you know we've just uh, seen the guy jumping a fence. Yes. Right? Okay, so this taken three. This one of just he's taken three mm. with with my you know it's done yeah. every scene that is showing <laughs> the same way that it's done the fence cut. So after yeah. he finishes with the fence, you see him yeah. coming into this meeting room having a go at this bloke on the on the <laughs> upper level, and it just does the same cutting technique. <laughs> With this battle with him and this oh, yeah. bloke upstairs. That's it. He's opening the do- doors. Opening. Yep. yep. There we go. He's walking it's through just... the door. Cut. Yep. Cut. Yep. yep. Yeah. He's cutting through. <laughs> he's going through the door. Oh god. Yeah. I've got it. Yeah. Oh man. Anyway. In the um. <laughs> he's uh, sorry. In the, car now. <laughs> in the comments for this ten hour of him jumping a fence, mm. uh, someone has put. Uh, four hours, thirty-two, nineteen. Simply incredible. <laughs> <laughs> nice. This is bonkers. Oh Jesus! This is fantastic podcasting as well. Yeah, this is exactly what everyone wants to listen to. Th- just listening to us laughing at this. But um, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I've, I've got nothing to say about this film really. Guns of Kimbo. I mean, I just. The, the filming irritated me. The colour scheme irritated me. The interesting bit of which was the story itself shot itself in the foot, pardon the pun, with the whole thing of um, the, oh, is he's got... He's got a, um, a bulletproof vest and he's he's fallen in. He's managed to contact Nix and he does all this thing, but... I, I think the it, story had gone by that point already. Yeah. I, th- I think the story started with the um, the father rearing his head, and then it it ended with him losing his head, and that was the actual story. There, it just it was there for ten minutes, and then it kind of fucked off through the the window again. Yeah, because th- that's that's again where it's it's different from like something like Crank, where Crank just goes his Chelio Ches Chev Chelios or whatever his fucking name is, and he goes off. He gets stabbed with this thing. He gets told he's got 24 hours. He's off. He's away. That's it. The film won't stop till forever. You know, you just, you just go. Whereas in this, it just sort of like grinds to a halt with a sudden, and she's my daughter. And there, here's a flashback of an explosion. And it was it was the guy who's running the game who's doing it. And it just does this kind of random plot drop. drop like, <laughs> like the writers suddenly woke up and went, what? Oh, I thought I just wrote shoot things, laugh, finish. Um, I mean, it's just, it just drops a whole block of plot in that car and you go, right, okay, so this is going to mean something, is it? No, 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 it isn't. And then it's like, oh, they, Daniel Radcliffe's dead. Oh, no. Oh, well, actually, he's got a bulletproof vest on. How? Oh, right, okay, fine. We know because he's seen the cop with the bulletproof vest and he goes, oh, bulletproof vest, good idea. Mm. But then we have to rewind in this kind of hyper-stylized kind of rewind thing to show you a flashback to show you that this thing's been explained. It's like, really? Did we have to have that? I think I made the mental leap, (laughs) you know? And that's, I think that's the problem. It's kind of, it wants to be 
clever and it wants to be stylish, but it doesn't know how to do it. It shows a complete lack of experience. It It's as if someone has turned around and said, Do you know what we need? We need like a remake of Running Man, but for millennials. And and something mm. a bit more hip and happening, you know. Mm. Let's put Cypress Hill in there as well, because they're mm. down with the kids, aren't they? Mm. Yeah. And and we yeah. we need something else. So if we throw some animations at it, and we'll get that wizard guy. What's mm. his name? Uh, yeah, Daniel. We'll, we'll get him in as well, because mm. that will give it uh, cred, mm. uh, street cred, if you mm. want. And it, it doesn't. Oh, like I said before, I think he does fine. I mm. don't think anyone is really bad in it, per no. se. I no. think it's just a case of it doesn't have any substance whatsoever. There is real no no real story in there. No. And if you're throwing stuff to make it look all like trippy and, and stuff, and it, it, you should be dropping acid while you, you're actually... Um, watching this then you really need to set up the story at the beginning as mm. to what's going on mm. uh, i think crank does that that kind yeah. of you're on your journey here we go here's the next 90 minutes laid out for you yeah and that's why it's at, at 11 and it, it can be tolerated at 11 mm. all the way through mm. this it thinks it's at 11 it shows oh look look how crazy i am and it it it's really lacking something. Mm. Well, again, you know, like I say, it's it's lacking. Almost weird thing to say, but it's lacking restraint. It's like it, you know, any of these things could have made a, you know, any of these little cuts, um, any of these little kind of little visual ticks could have been mm-hmm. something interesting, but it it, it sort of forgets them. And then it kind of brings them back again. And it's like, well, either do them or don't. You know what I mean? And that's th- and and that's the problem. It's like, you know, I mean, we keep going back to Crank, but it's the nearest con- comparison. Crank just mm. goes, right, fine. I'm just going to go mad and you either stay with me or you don't. But like with with this, one minute we're supposed to be thinking that Nick's the other hunter is you know some absolute psychopath badass and then five minutes later we're getting oh yeah but she's a badass with a heart because she's scared of fire and and here's a flashback to a car exploding mm-hmm. will we address this no and then like five minutes from the end suddenly it's like no the only other three actors in the film all happen <laughs> to be interrelated <laughs> it's like oh Oh, all right. And then, so, so the bad guy isn't just a bad guy. He's a bad guy who killed the other girls, the, killed the girl's father. The father happens to be the cop investigating it all. The cop's partner happens to be working with the bad guy. It's just like, you know, to quote the last Spider-Man movie, just, just Scooby-Doo this shit. I mean, it's just like, what? Too interconnected, really, isn't it? Well, again, it just feels, no, it just feels rushed. It just feels like someone's just gone, oh, f- Fuck it! What? How can we? How can we actually put a plot in here other than they're just a part of a game? This is like, yeah. Well, um, let's make the let's make the cop the f- a father, and and it doesn't matter because she doesn't f- fucking show any any sort of interest in it anyway. He dies before she meets him. She has no interest in. She's no interaction with him before, since, or after in the film. <laughs> it's like everything seems either unearned or just completely pointless yeah it feels like a a weird like zombie level from call of duty which Mm. style over substance Mm. yeah that's exactly what it is yeah it's it's a shame because i I think you could have had something really good and cultish that may have been like wow do you remember Mm. that thing during the pandemic that nobody really watched but yeah Let's go watch it again. It's, it's, it's quite incredible watching mm. Daniel, what's his name, Zip Face, yeah. uh, <laughs> running around doing crazy stuff that you don't expect him to do. Yeah, like, like you say, Jim, I, I applaud him for taking these sort of things because, look, 
he's made his money and now he's having fun. Good mm. luck to him. I think that is brilliant. Yeah. Unfortunately, you, you don't get to see the finished cut until it's already up on the screen. Yeah. Yeah, that's sadly it. And what are you, any other thoughts, Jim? Or you got anything on it you want to? Uh, it's one of those, I mean, I think kind of, it's one of those films where I have to now say, this wasn't made for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not the demographic they're looking at for this. Yeah. You know what I mean? If they yeah. were, they'd have used the proper blow run blitz because they'd know it would annoy me. Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. But you know what I mean? It is kind of... As Hilton said, it is a remake of The Running Man. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's true. With the, with, the, yeah. with a bit of a twist, and it's kind of really only has half a plot, and mm. uh, it relies on the fact that if we make things flashy and noisy enough, you won't notice. Yeah. Actually, what uh, you... Simple s- of Doom strategy, that is, I believe. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What you say about The Running Man, this is actually closer to The Running Man original novel than the film that came out. Because in the film, in the actual book, he was actually running, just going through a normal city. And people were, yes, like, getting yeah. money. And, so, in a way, this is closer to the novel. Hmm. You know, I don't say I, mean, it's I think actually... it had more potential for, like, I mean, with the smarter script, you could have really rogue or copped the shit out of this. Yes, you could. exactly. Yeah. That level of excess. Mm. Yeah, you again. That's that Ro- Robocop and um, Starship Troopers. That whole idea of just pushing it up to eleven and using mm. it to to do some kind of satire on modern life, and and that's yeah. the thing. They did seem to try that every now and again when they had a little poke at the vegans about trolling culture, about mm. people being attached to the internet and the internet bringing out the worst in everyone. And it's like, yeah, but it's it's as if a fifteen year old wrote it and just. Didn't have any nuance yeah. and just went. Uh, the internet's bad. Okay, mm. you know, it's you know, uh, I wouldn't. The hardest man on the internet is the one who's trying to be nice, and then his girlfriend, who she he rescues, she just goes nah because she don't like him. Mm. It's just like, mm. oh, get over it, fuck's sake. <laughs> Darren, what about you, mate? I, mean, I, as you can well tell, I've I've run out of things to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have. Um, oh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I I just found that there was a with this film you had to I I had to just let it go. You know, it was mm. just like nope, this is not going to be like you know rated in any top one hundred movies. I'm mm. sure there's going to be lots of mistakes and the science doesn't work and you know. I'm, I'm sure somebody's fired 50,000 bullets before changing a clip. So, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm uh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, just going to take it as it comes and just accept it. Yeah. You know, that's it. Yeah. And I actually found I enjoyed it more than I would have done had I been trying to pick sort of like holes in it because that would, that would that's just like finding a loose thread on a woolly jumper. You know, once you yeah. start pulling that, the whole thing comes <laughs> apart in your hands, and mm. you're left with just a bundle of wool after that. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to pick holes in it. It's just if it irritates the fuck out of me, it's, I think that's thing... it. You find it's, it's the, it's the one thing. It's, uh, it's like with songs and stuff like that. that mm. You just have to hear something that's just not quite right. Yeah. In it. And it, it sticks with you. It's like mm. I'll give you a perfect example, right? Mm. I used to like uh, fashion by David Bowie, right? <laughs> Great song. Until somebody yeah. pointed out the little crime he commits. Go on. In that song, right? Go, Go on. It's extending a word. Oh, yeah. Extending. <laughs> there's one word he extends it. It's just like, oh, Dave, why? Why would you? You were, you were going so well. Could you not fit something in there that fit the rhythm? You know, mm. two words together. It goes um, out there dancing on the dance floor. And it's like, you extended the word the. <laughs> the dance floor. How about the crowded dance floor or something like this? But no, <laughs> he committed that crime. He stretched out that one word. And now you can't like, hear it ever oh, again. <laughs> David, come on. I, I wait for it to appear now. Every time that I, I listen to it. 
my brain hadn't really registered it before until somebody pointed that out and it's like oh man that's like that's like buying a nice new white shirt right and getting a little stain on it where nobody else can really see it but you know it's there this is it and it's like that's no longer your pristine i had this when i got a six million dollar man action figure right i lost one of its socks right before that it was like one of my favorite toys right Mm. and then i lost the sock and you could have just set it on fire and i couldn't have given a shit i really couldn't have (laughs) nice really i was so upset by that it was just like you are you are useless to me now this is it (laughs) be gone steve austin take your sock your one socked fucking action figure i mean everything about it, it was all perfect the action figure itself was fine but no, I lost a single sock, and that was it. That's it. Unclean, yeah. Unclean. gone. <laughs> you are, you are tainted. You are tainted you are goods. Salad. <laughs> you are salad. Get out of my way and be gone. Do not bother me again. Get out this of my it. house. <laughs> yep, I'll go and buy an entire new Bionic Man figure just to, just to, <laughs> just to get it perfect again. But it will never be like it was. Never. No. Because you never go back. <laughs> <laughs> you never go back. Wow, that was True. that was quite the journey we went on there, Dal. I it was. I've forgotten, <laughs> forgotten why we started that journey in the first place. You know, it's like, yeah, have you ever had those days? You get on a bus, you go to where you were trying to go to, and you get there and you think, why did, why did I come out in the first place? <laughs> what the, the fuck did I stow that for? Yeah, yeah it's, it's like the bigger, the bigger, more extensive version of going into the kitchen and wondering why you've walked into the kitchen. Mm. Yes. You know, yes. I. But, I, I but yeah, going into going to the kitchen hasn't just cost you twenty quid, you know. But this did. Yeah. You know, it's the most expensive senior moment you're ever likely to have. Not yet, ain't. Eh? <laughs> well, you know, some of us <laughs> to say, you know, <laughs> have had that. Yeah. Why it's don't plenty, I come here? Plenty more senior moments you can have, but um, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, that's it. I mean. I can say this film just just uh, it, it just an, it just annoyed me and it kept on annoying me and then it like I say it made me feel motion sick in the first 15 minutes so I was already out really but mm-hmm. I stuck with it and I think I turned to Carol at one point and I said if I didn't have to watch this for the podcast I would have turned this shit off <laughs> <laughs> so there you go <laughs> see if we were still doing Patreon I'd guilt everyone listening into doing this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Right, any last thoughts or we'll wrap this up and we'll move on to next week's. Nah, I'm done. Yeah, same yeah. here, I'm done. Yeah, I'm pretty much done. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so little to say about so little. <laughs> but anyway, um yeah, so don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, go and go onto YouTube and watch Taken but with more cuts or Brian Mills jumps a fence. <laughs> Because if we can take anything away from this review, that is funny shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing else is worth it. But that's cool. So, anyway, right, we shall wrap it up there. If obviously anyone disagrees with us, you know, or wants to put their two penny worth in, then jump over to facebook.com slash groups slash the Black Dog Podcast or get in contact with us through the... the um, website which is blackdogpodcast.com and on contact us just send us an email or through the uh, form or you can get in contact with us on twitter which is at blackdogpodcast.com right so before we find out what's happening in jim's world and elton's world we'll find out what we are watching next week and this is where mr jim comes in <laughs> sir you gave us you gave us a juicy dangler um, in the green room last week when we tried to find out what your secret squirrel film was when it wasn't picked by Elton. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, yes, it's on Netflix. Mm-hmm. And it's called The Trip. The Trip. The Trip. The Trip. The Trip. Nothing to do with Steve Coogan. Okay. Oh, I was going to say, is that what it is? Is that, is that mm, one? No. It, it, is, it is a... Uh, Film in foreign. <laughs> a film in foreign? <laughs> okay. Um, I can't remember if it's Norwegian or Swedish. Is it mm. Numi Rapace? Numi Rapace is in it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I strongly advise you to go into it knowing as little as possible. 
Okay. Don't even try and avoid reading the Netflix blurb if you can. Okay. Cool. Right. Um. Well, in which case, I shall get off of I, I, IMDb right now. <laughs> <laughs> um cool okay so numi rapass and um some other people whose names i will no doubt absolutely slaughter next week um cool okay so that's the trip and that's on netflix so netflix from the sound of it you've already watched it is that true uh yes we watched it the weekend and we just kind of uh, oh, we'll give that a go <laughs> and uh it was it was uh because it was um i'm on a. Uh, Hmm. Uh, an email was from Adam Neville, and his last missive, he listed a ton of things he'd watched and enjoyed. Ah. And this was one of them. I thought, oh, we'll give that a go. Well, there you go. Mm. Or, you know, he's you know, the man, man who wrote The Relic. I'm, I'm not going to question him. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, cool. Okay, then. Um, well, we shall check it out and come back next week for, to discuss the trip. And as you rightly pointed out, uh, Jim, if anyone's watching along with us, it's not the Steve Coogan, Rob Bryden movie. Um, it's actually a Numi Rapace uh, Netflix original by the looks of things. Mm. Cool. Okie dokie. Right. Well, we will see that next week. But until that time, what's happening over on Hypnagoria Land, Jim? Uh, well, this one I'm continuing my history of universal horror. Mm-hmm. Um, if I get my shit together, mm-hmm. <laughs> I will, there'll be a on my other show. There'll be a new case for Mister Flaxman Low, mm-hmm. cool. and also if I get my shit together, there'll be a new commentary club, which um, will be on Extra. Oh God, yes, <laughs> yes. I, <laughs> I saw I saw that online the other night when you were watching that. Yeah, um, mm. it actually, funny enough, it turned up on um, Film Four yesterday as of time of recording <laughs> as well, which is kind of. Uh, weird timing um, but I didn't watch it I couldn't scary clowns in baths can't be doing with that um, cool <laughs> okie dokie right and what about you Elton what's going on over at Rogue 2 uh, the only thing I've been putting out at the moment is Into the Expanse mm. and uh, the last episode of uh, season 6 so episode 6 of season 6 will be out tomorrow morning Ooh. Your, your your pleasure, your listening pleasure. And I will listen to that as I walk into work. I hope it's a long walk. Usually it's about 50 minutes. Well, then you'll have to walk in at least three times. Oh, right. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> well, I'll do it on the walk home as well. Yep. Cool. Okie dokie. And um, yeah, and that's over at rogue2media.com. And Jim, yours is over at hypnagoria.com. Yes? Yes, indeed. Brilliant. Get all the links out. That's always good. Right. Well, that's it for me. And um, Darren, you haven't got anything to promote, have you? Uh, no, not at all. Absolutely nothing. Ah, well, there you go. That's that's uh, that's made things easier then. So because I've got has. nothing to say either, so um, we'll just leave it there. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Darren. Thank you, Elton. No problem. And uh, thank you all for listening. And like I say, send in feedback if you disagree with our opinions. You know, we'll read them out. Um, might not agree with them, but we'll read them out. But you know what I mean. And um, yes, mm-hmm. we shall see you all next week for the trip. Until then. Take care, and we'll see you soon. Tati, bye. Bye Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ta-da.